What I've got for you today is a little bit different. It's the advice of 10 different <coughs> jiu-jitsu black belts, including world champions, including Olympic medalists in other sports, including high-level coaches, giving you their very best advice about starting Brazilian jiu-jitsu. It's a really interesting bunch of information you're going to get. A lot of the guys talk about the inner game, the mental and the emotional process of surviving those initial months on the mat, and that's super valuable. I'm going to start out with something that I usually tell people, which is that jiu-jitsu is really only, at its core, a handful of positions. It's somewhere between six and eight or six and ten basic positions. You got to learn those basic positions, and then you got to learn a couple of ways to get out of each of those positions, a couple of ways to get into those positions, and a couple of attacks. So for example, you got to learn a couple of ways to sweep someone from the closed guard, a couple of ways to attack from the closed guard, and a couple of ways to pass the closed guard. Same for the knee mount, same for the mount, same for the back mount. Once you have that, you're not going to be so lost, and you'll have a basic idea of kind of, sort of, what you're supposed to do in most of the positions that you're going to end up on the ground. All right, enough of me yabbling. Let's get on to the advice given by some of these other people. Hey guys, if you were just starting Jiu-Jitsu, the two things I would focus is, first thing, I would try to find a school that has a very good environment. I think, in my opinion, that's one of the most important things. So try to find one school, meet the instructor and see how the instructor is. If the instructor is a nice person and is a good guy, probably the environment on that school is going to be good as well. So first thing, I would try to find a school with a very good environment. Second thing, I would try to focus as much as possible in the fundamentals. So I would make sure that in this school they have a very good fundamentals curriculum, a very good, very good fundamentals program that's specifically for beginners. And uh, because I believe that the fundamentals and the beginners problem, the program is going to be the base of your jiu-jitsu in the future. So make sure you find a very good school, school with a very good environment and also a school that has a very good fundamentals program. And I would not do sparrings in the first two or three months. Just to make sure first you learn jiu-jitsu and then you start doing sparrings. And then it's gonna be, your journey is going to be way more fun. And you can do sparrings for the rest of your life. So make sure in the first two or three months you just focus on the techniques and learning the fundamentals of jiu-jitsu. Os. Hey guys, Brendan Mullins here. Just wanted to give some advice out to uh, anybody who's new in Brazilian jiu-jitsu or also just anyone who wants to you know, take their jiu-jitsu seriously. And... Um, it doesn't take a whole lot of time, but it's very, very beneficial if you follow through with it. And the thing that I want to say, the advice that I want to give is you need to have goals for your training. Uh, and you need to write them down as well. Uh, there's different kind of goals we can have. And I think there's kind of three main categories that, that everyone needs to have if they want to progress uh, at, at, a, at a faster rate than just showing up to class and training. Uh, you can get good that way for sure, but it's one of the slower ways to get good. So when I say make goals, this is what I mean. First, you need to have an overall goal, like a big picture goal. Like why are you training jiu-jitsu, right? It might be because you want to be a world champion. It might be because you want to lose weight. It might be because you want to, you know, make friends and, and, and stay in a group. That's fine. All those reasons are fine. Uh, so you need to have a big overall goal that's going to always, you know, when you don't feel like training, it'll motivate you to train. So if your goal is to be a world champion and you know that's your goal and you wake up in the morning and you don't want to train, you can think to yourself, you know, would a world champion take the day off? The answer is probably no. You get up, you go to class. Okay. Uh, number two, you want to make, you know, shorter term goals. Uh, so it might be something like, you know, I want to do 15 tournaments in a year, right? Or I want to uh, do everything I can to get my blue belt by this time. That's a little bit harder because it's up to your instructor, but you can still make a goal like that. Uh, or you might want to say, I want to lose 30 pounds. Uh, in this amount of time, not just in, you know, for in, in, at some point I want to lose 30 pounds. I want to accomplish these goals and at this date. That's important to make an end date. And whether you succeed or not, it's going to get you more focused. And the last kind of goal I want to talk about is even smaller than that. We want to have goals for each class that we train in. So for instance, you might have a goal like I want to try to use the technique that I learned in class in the training portion. That might be one thing. Or you might say, okay, I want to get better at arm locking people. So every Monday, the only submission I'm going to allow myself to use is the arm lock. So no matter what position I'm in, I'm going to try to find my way into the arm lock. And you could actually have a goal like that every single day that you train. So if you have three days a week, you know, one might be I want to do the arm lock. And then the other two days might be 
I just want to try to apply the things I'm learning in class. You know, if you train six days a week, you might have a lot of different goals you were, you were, you were trying to accomplish. Uh, so that would be my advice to, to again, new people in jiu-jitsu, but also anyone who wants to take their, their jiu-jitsu seriously. Okay? Set goals, write them down, long-term, medium, class goals. Write it down. Some of the best advice I can give a jiu-jitsu athlete that's just starting out is listen, pay attention, and follow the steps. I can't tell you how many times jiu-jitsu students come to me and they start drilling a move and it's going well, and then all of a sudden they make this switch in their head where I think it's better this way, or I think it should be done like this, or this feels better and natural. And then we have to take a step back, reteach it, relearn it, redo it, and then start reinforcing good habits, and it just elongates the learning process. Take your time, learn it slow, and follow your instructor's steps. They're there for a reason. You will thank yourself later on, I promise. The single best piece of advice that I can give you when you're starting out jiu-jitsu is offer your instructor cash for belt promotions. Never come to class without at least 100 bucks in your pocket. But in all seriousness, the best piece of advice I can give you is make sure that you understand realistic goals. Give yourself short-term goals, intermediate goals, long-term goals, and those goals should not include trying to submit someone or uh, trying to survive around with the, you know, the, the, the tough purple belt that you're facing all the time. Those are not properly quantifiable. The properly quantifiable goals that you should have are, can I recognize the basic movements that I'm supposed to be performing myself? Can I recognize the movements that my partner is performing that are gonna threaten me? And then after that, can I respond to those movements appropriately? So uh, we always say in here, first learn to control your own body. Second, learn to control your partner's body. And only third, do you worry about actually submitting them? You may not get a submission for six months when you start jujitsu, but if you are recognizing that your posture is broken and fixing it, if you're recognizing that you're accessing a lever to your partner's hip and performing a guard pass, every one of those is a victory that's going to motivate you to keep coming to class. And it's those little victories that are gonna add up to the long-term success in your jujitsu journey. For beginners, the most important aspect of training is self-defense. And during the self-defense course, you're learning the efficiency of Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu techniques. Uh, lots of them include scooting, shrimping, bridging, ducking, weaving, uh, clinching, closing distance, understanding balance, base, and most important, understanding leverage and wedging. All these movements are the one, the building blocks for the future techniques that are more advanced. So my advice to you is concentrate on self-defense, fundamentals, and build from there. Go train, have fun. My best advice for a beginner in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. The key thing is you need to embrace that you're gonna suck. And that's it, you're a beginner. You cannot expect for you to go in and challenge the black belt and be able to go and tap them out. Even if you're really successful in life, even if you're really athletic, you're covered in muscle, no one is above the process. Jiu-Jitsu is an acquired, developed skill. So you're gonna go and start off sucking. You're not gonna know what to do. You're gonna go and you're gonna feel incompetent. You're gonna feel foolish. And that's just the way it is. And you need to embrace that. If you didn't know how to swim, what are you gonna do? Just go out and challenge Michael Phelps? No, you're gonna figure out how to tread water and then you're gonna learn how to breathe all over again and you're gonna feel incompetent. No one is above the process. It's okay, embrace it. You're gonna get tapped out a whole bunch of times. We all go through it. And then after a while, you'll get a little bit better and then a little bit better. All right, so embrace the fact that you're going to suck and it's okay. Uh, some tips for brand new BJJ white belts. The hardest thing you're gonna encounter, you've already overcome. You walk through the doors you joined, you're starting. Congratulations to you. Uh, other tips to help you out is consistency. Try to maintain a regular amounts of practices per week. So if you can make it two days a week, make sure you make it every two days a week, three days a week, four days a week, whatever you can make it. Make sure it's consistent. Do your best to have consistent training. Don't be afraid to ask questions. There is no dumb questions. We all have to start somewhere. 
ask as many questions as you can, take notes if you can. It's a great thing to make a little habit for. Uh, another piece of advice I would say is have fun. Have fun at what you're doing. Don't compare yourself to the advanced belts. Focus on what you're doing because you'll be surprised in a little while. That'll be you with the new white belts coming in the door looking up to you for advice. Anyway, all the best. Keep up the good work and we'll see you on the mats. One thing I'd think about is frameworks. What do I mean by that? Anytime you're learning something new, you want to get a sense of the big picture first so that you understand where what you're learning fits in. For example, if you're learning three moves in a given class, it really matters whether that's three of 10 or three of 100. So having a sense of the big picture allows you to place what you're learning into context. For example, the framework for a self-defense situation, well, either it takes place on the feet or it doesn't. If it's on the feet, either we're facing each other or maybe we got approached from behind. If it's not on the feet, maybe one of us is down, the other standing, or we're both on the ground. And this is where I think um, the having a, a sense of the various positions, the positional hierarchy, as I like to call it, is super useful. So what's the worst position we can be in? Someone having our back. And then conversely, what's the best position? Us having someone's back. So that gives us a sense of kind of the, the top and bottom of the hierarchy. The four basic positions I teach my students, back, side control, mount, and guard. So when you're learning, and even now, whether you're brand new or been training for a little while, write down on one side, offense, on the other side, defense, back, mount, side, and guard, and write down everything you know. You might find that you have a ton of mount attacks and guard attacks, but very few passes or escapes from those positions. Trying to map out and give structure to your learning, I find super useful. I know Stefan's great at providing that kind of structure. I try to do that with my teaching. And uh, yeah, that's, uh, that's been something very helpful for me and hopefully helpful for you. Uh, hope you enjoy and we'll see you on the mats. The uh, best piece of advice I could give somebody just starting out jujitsu would be not to try to learn too much. Focus on a few areas, guard retention, being able to get back to your guard from everywhere, uh, and then your attack. Uh, oftentimes guys try to learn a bunch of different moves, fancy stuff. You're not going to remember all that stuff. You can learn three or four moves a day. So I would focus on some sp specific areas, guard retention, uh, being able to get back to your guard from every position, side control, mount from the back, and then attacking. You know, if you can, if you're confident in being able to get back to your guard, you're going to be confident in attacking uh, rather than just holding on for dear life. So I would focus um, on a few important things and then build from there. The most important thing you can do at the beginning of jiu-jitsu is to realize you're going to suck and to love the process of sucking. Because you know who sucks at the beginning? Everybody. Okay? It's a new movement. It's a new process for you to learn. And when you first start trying out the moves you learn in class, your brain's not going to be able to compute them fast enough and you're going to get beat up. Everyone does. You're going to get beat up by smaller guys. You're going to get beat up by the girls if you're a guy. And it's going to take a while to put everything together. Trust that it will happen. The people that are the best at jujitsu are the people that stayed the longest. The people that enjoyed it. The people that go over every little micro movements. And you learn that you do get better. You love the process of getting better. If you stink at first, it's gonna be that much more fun when you, st when you start finally. First thing's gonna happen is you're gonna stop getting tapped out. Then you're gonna start having stalemates. Then once in a while you're gonna start tapping out the other people and you're gonna get better and better. The secret to it is just to keep doing it. Hi, welcome to Jiu Jitsu. What a great journey you have taken on. And over the next number of years, I hope you really, really enjoy yourself. A couple of things I think you're gonna get out of Jiu Jitsu is one, a great level of fitness. Jiu Jitsu is hard, a lot of hard work, a lot of hard training. Every class you're gonna work up a sweat, but you're gonna get in better shape. You're gonna become more mobile, you're gonna become more flexible, and you're gonna get more fit. And that's a great, great thing for anybody. Also, the camaraderie, the people you're gonna meet, the fun you're gonna have, the friends you're gonna meet, and enjoy yourselves on the mats. It's just fantastic. I've been doing martial arts for a lot of years. I think one of the greatest things that I've enjoyed about Jiu Jitsu so far is the people that I've met and how great they are. We're a great community. Jiu Jitsu is so much fun. Being on the mats, rolling. And the best advice I could probably give you is just to hurry up and slow down. Take your time. Learn something every day. Enjoy yourself. Don't be in a rush to get all the things. Just have a good time. 
really just take one thing out of every class and have a lot of fun. See you on the mats.